Okay, welcome to the Moon Gemini reading. The first thing that came to mind because the moon is going to conjunct, conjunct the North Node. Um, the thing that came to mind was like there's going to be a press release or a press conference or this Cardi song, press, 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 press. I'm just saying, like, with the trying over to Aquarius, like, it's like a bunch of people about to find out a bunch of details or information. And because, again, it's going to score Neptune, you can only believe half of what you hear. So, um, just keep that in mind. All right, so let's get into this Moon and Gemini reading. Um, it's going to conjunct the North Node, which means we're definitely going to feel um intuitively the direction we best take in regards to you know learning and communicating and coming togetherness on the path that we individually have as being hugely expressed with all this energy in Aquarius um but with that square again being over to Neptune it's going to be some type of illusion or a cloud or you know some type of veil over it first so it's like it's like getting a message to meet up with someone or to go somewhere and you say like you know like okay and while you're on the way there you know uh there's an accident and it slows down traffic so you have to take more time to get there than you normally would um, they might be thinking that you're not coming. They might not know if you're coming or not. They might think you're not going to show up. They just have all these assumptions, or you could possibly have all these assumptions from someone else if this is reversed. But what happened was there was a, a small detour. So it looks like things are not going to go as planned, but they actually will if you choose to trust your intuition over the... Um, images that you see okay so let's get into it all right so number one position 11th house friends aquarius energy that's the underlying situation to what we should not do or what we need to pay attention to 10th house the world all right, third position, what we should take action on, what we should do, earth element stability. And last, the outcome that can be changed, Jupiter abundance. Uh, I'm okay with abundance. I don't know about you, but I'm okay with abundance, okay? Overall energy at the bottom is Mars force. So... Mars and Uranus are linked up right now. And then with the moon being in Gemini, it's going to directly try the sun three degrees and then head next one step, one degree over with um, Saturn. It's going to sextile Chiron and Aries, which this makes a lot of sense here. Mars and Venus. Look at that. Okay. Uh, Mars is in a tight square with Jupiter, eight degrees. Neptune is now 19 degrees. So it's going to start moving away from the nodes. So the, the little veil is going to be gone. And ready to see what was cloud in their judgment, what was making the collective, you know, give its power away um, instead of focusing in on itself, itself more than the environment, which is the tenth house being something to not do or to pay attention, you know, use caution with. Um, so we got eight. That's a eleven, seven, and seven. With this five here. So, we got three out of four of these are in the 30s. So, there's definitely a need to express at 
this time. So the underlying situation being 11th house friends. Um, again, that's Aquarian energy. Um, we have a lot, lot, lots of Aquarian energy going on right now. Um, we are officially in Aquarius season. So with Aquarius and Gemini linking up, a lot of communication, a lot of talking about facts and truths and what you know, what you don't know, did you know, lots of that going on. Um, being relatable with groups of people and not just one-on-one -on -one like Libra. Um, Gemini is a crowd, a small crowd, and um, Aquarius is everybody. <laughs> like, it's bigger than just, you know, a small talk. Like, it's everybody. So, uh, and Gemini also is like consulting with yourself. And then Libra is one-on-one -on -one with another person. And then Aquarius is everybody, you know, that thing. But, again... Everybody is starting to realize or see something that they didn't see before. In clusters, I want to say it's like a groups. Like this community is realizing this. This group of people are realizing that. This group of people are realizing this. Like that's how I kind of like see it a little bit. But it's because things are being expanded. Restrictions are being expanded or are going to start being expanded. That everyone is going to be affected by and it's time to wake up, wake up to it. So let's look at this 11 house friends, which is an eight. Why is this? So we have the princess of wands here. This is like the page of wands. So there definitely is some type of message coming in. Oop. Message. I think it's some. I don't. I don't is it going to be an emergency message, like an emer like a worldwide message or an emergency message or some mass message is going out. It's going to be a mass message. Yeah, it's some type of mass message is coming out that we've all been kind of anticipating. We just don't know which way it's going to go. So, um, what about the world we need to be mindful of? got art which is like temperance you want to be patient because it's it's not all has not been revealed just yet only a small percentage but it's still going to be shocking that's kind of what i get from it yeah it's something there's a yeah there's a message of some some form of change that's going to take place on a massive scale and whatever is macro is going to be micro. So it's like, there's going to be a big message regarding money, maybe income taxes. Pinnacles. It might be income tax money or it might be just whatever assets that you've acquired thus far there's going to be some type of realization or some type of message about that some people might feel like it's devaluing other people might take the heed and get to work on it i feel like the one percent is at a very big disadvantage right now <laughs> compared to everybody else because they've built their wealth in a certain way that they can't build wealth anymore. So now it's time to go back to the drawing board and, you know, be creative, but not allow, you know, the unknown. Well, it, the other ones, the high priests, but don't let, you know, the new way you have to come up with your wealth distract you from the overall goal because it's not about accumulating wealth as much as it's about learning who you are and how to take control of your force and use it to generate wealth. Use your your creative force, your godly force, your holy spirit, holy using working with holy spirit to help you generate what you need in the physical reality. So that's leads us here to stability. So, what do we what, what do we need to stabilize? Got 
I'll put it here. Right, what we're working on stabilizing the three of pentacles at the bottom. We have the six of pentacles or three six of discs with the emperor. So what's going to put us in the position of being the boss and what's going to put us in the position of not being able to be the boss? What's going to, what plan can we create with the moon in Taurus transit showing us where we are the most valuable and we have the best assets and resources within ourselves that we can leverage to generate the health and wealth that we're looking for to stabilize in our life with that transit did you see where you can be the boss of your life and not let other people boss you around at the bottom we have the um three of pentacles three of disc um which is martian energy mars and um capricorn so it's something that we can do consistently and perfect and not give up on stay true stay the course there's something that we can do that we've probably already been doing this whole time and just didn't realize it that can actually put us in a position where we take our power back so that's how we end up with you know abundance um and the abundance with the number seven is something that was always destined for our spirit to attain we just have to go through the realization of you know balancing out what's within and getting rid of the things that you know don't serve us anymore that's the only way we can get it you know taking time during the isolation um because 10th house is capricorn and siren energy that is about isolating yourself or separating yourself from other people regardless of what their demands are so you can understand how you can be in control of yourself how are you stabilizing your energy or are you letting it be yo-yoed and play with, with other people whenever they feel like it? So Jupiter in abundance. Um, what should we focus on? Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. So we got... These two came out together. Again, like there's some, there's some type of... Um, because this Venus, we already have Venus at the bottom of the deck here. The in person of three of swords. And then we have the um, eight of pentacles. So I see this is with eight of pentacles. It's like. Like your job. I see it's like your job being closed down or your job is shutting down. Or you're not going to be able to work in the same manner you used to work. You're not going to be able to generate the type of money that you used to making. Like I was saying, that 1% been living pretty good for the last, you know, a few decades, century or whatever. But now the tide is changing. And you don't want to be caught up in that wave that's being blasted through here. Thinking, you know, how everyone else acquired wealth 10, 20, 50, 70 years ago is the only way to do it. It's not. That's not the way anymore. It's not that your individuality with Jupiter being in Aquarius, that's your abundance. Realizing what that, what makes you you is how you receive that abundance. And it's going, again, it's going to separate you from certain people or certain, you know, ways of relating to people that, you know, you haven't had to experience before, but it'll pay off. I feel like it will pay off. So um, this is the way it actually came out. Three, three, eight. So it might hurt, but you know this is the major right here. This is the major. This is not changing. This how you think about it can change how you feel about it, and what you accumulated can definitely change too. The work that you do can change, but this isn't going anywhere. It's major. Okay. So, yeah, we may have to, you know, be a little bit more discerning and use more wisdom in how we associate another three here with coming, being separated 
from things brings us some abundance that we get to work on. So maybe I could put it like this too. Um, Cause the three of swords is like a long, it, it, time is here. Cause Saturn, this is a Saturn card. So it has to do with time, okay? Now, maybe that's really what the heartbreak is, is that you, you need time. There's going to be time that's going to be required of you when attaining this abundance. Hence, patience. So not being caught up in, again, how the rest of the world acquired their abundance or prosperity, but focusing in on your own thing, honing that in, stabilizing that, and allowing that separation to make you better. Because again, in time, with hard work, um, that's what... <laughs> I had a conversation, or, or was in the conversation, about how time is very precious and... But at the same time, you have to work every single day. So if you know you have to work every single day and it, it's going to require all of you, why not dedicate yourself to something that's going to require all of you that you actually give your all to? Like that balance. Mars, Venus, that divine masculine, divine feminine balance. Even though this is first, this is a four, and then this is five, this, this comes first. Like, you have to understand and know and love yourself to appreciate where you give your time to that six of pentacles are resources. Like, that's how you know where to put your emperor energy into the most, the most consistent, too. So, um, yeah. It's coming. Abundance is coming. It will take time. How much time? Nobody really knows. What all this air energy, <laughs> especially Aquarius, is going to be very unexpected. But you have to remain consistent. That's the, that's the only thing. So what advice do you have um, with this moon in Gemini? What advice do we have with the moon in Gemini? What advice do we have? For this moon in Gemini. Advice for the moon in Gemini. Okay. So we have ooh, relationships, patience, and stillness. So it may take some time. Again, this three of swords. I think that's the only thing that's going to, you know, be the tough cookie in the situation is that um the world is on one time frame while our spirits are on another one and finding the ways of tempering that gap um inside out um not letting you know other people's again associations of what wealth and status and happiness and prosperity and abundance mean affects who we are inside um not being insecure um with the sextile over to chiron most definitely you know not feeding into you know growing up and not having this this that and the third and wanting to give it to yourself and your children your family like that's all great and good to want to give back to the community that raised you but don't stress yourself out in the meantime just because it hasn't happened exactly the way you want it to happen yet because the only thing you're supposed to be doing you know being patient and still while what you call out comes to you is to keep remaining here keep remaining here keep you know allowing things to come to you the way it's supposed to um not get caught up in how things look um chiron in aries 
five degrees, we're changing how we identify ourselves and what we are, and not allowing our pain or hurt to be our identifying mark, allowing our individuality and, you know, our spiritual selves to be the hallmark of who we are. You know, everybody's been through something. We are supposed to go through something that's just life. Now, how you view that, how you interpret it, and how you use it to build stability in your life is something that you have to figure out with your relationship with God and creator or however you view your spiritual self. But again, in time, everything you work for is going to pay off. Just keep going. Alrighty, so thank you so much for tuning in to this Moon and Gemini reading. Um, I do have personal readings available. You can check it out on my website, which is linked in the description of my channel, as well as uh, my Instagram, where you may follow me, at Luminescence. Thank you so much. Peace.